I got a request for chicken enchilada suiza. And if you're not familiar with that, it's basically chicken enchiladas with a green sauce. And we're gonna be using tomatillos, some uh, Anaheim chilies, poblano peppers, and we're going to do a little technique to them to really bring out the best flavor in these enchiladas. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after my chef joke. All right, I'd like to start off here with chef joke number one, and number two will be a little bit later in the video, so stay tuned for that. All right, what do you call a spice with a PhD? Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so we're gonna start off here by making our delicious green enchilada sauce from scratch. It's very easy to do and it doesn't take very long to, to make it. And we're gonna start with some uh, tomatillos. These are Mexican, basically green tomatoes and they come with a little bit of a husk on them. So you wanna peel that off first, take it off and underneath, you know, you'll notice that it's a little bit sticky. The re there's like a sticky residue so and some dirt probably. So we're gonna peel all these off and then I'm gonna rinse them under some cold water to get them nice and clean. And then we're gonna place them onto our foil lined baking sheet over here that I have, that I've already kind of just brushed up with a little bit of avocado oil so that it doesn't, anything sticks. Okay, so you're gonna wanna dry off your tomatillos a bit from all the water before you put them onto your tray. All right, so we'll just place these on here just like that. And you're gonna need about a pound of these. Even a little extra would be fine. You know, if you had a pound and a quarter, that's perfectly good. And then I have an Anaheim chili here. This is a mild chili and I rinsed it. So now I'm just gonna dry it up. And I have a jalapeno. Same thing. So we're gonna just place these right onto our baking sheet. And then I have some garlic. So I broke off some garlic cloves uh, from the bulb and I leave the paper on, okay? That's gonna protect it when it's cooking so it doesn't burn. So leave as much paper on as you can and they will cook up nicely and soften up beautifully. The last thing we're gonna roast on this tray is a, a nice, good sized yellow onion. So we'll cut off the ends. So you wanna cut the onion in big chunks. And I'm gonna just place that right there on my tray. And I wanna spread everything out. I wanna make sure that everything has enough room so that it will you know, brown up nicely. Now, with the onion, I'm gonna add a little extra oil just because I don't want it to dry out as it's under the broiler. So we'll just drizzle a little bit over the top and then just work it in with your hands. All right, so this is gonna go under the broiler for, you know, and very low in the oven because I don't want it to get really uh, burnt right away. So I'm putting it much lower in the oven and I'll show you that. And it'll be probably 15 to 20 minutes. And we're gonna, I'll turn things over as it cooks. So here you can see how low in the oven I have this tray. So while our peppers are cooking in the oven, we have time to talk about our chicken that we're using. I bet you thought maybe I was gonna tell you a chef joke, but not yet, okay, hang on. Um, so the chicken that I'm using in this is a rotisserie chicken because I want it to be easy for you and quick for you to put together and it's delicious, right? Rotisserie chicken is nice and tender and juicy and, and very flavorful. So it works perfectly for this recipe and it just helps you get dinner on the table a lot quicker. I'm using a rotisserie chicken that I bought from Sprouts Market. I like their rotisserie chicken because the ingredients are really good. You can see here that there's nothing really artificial in there. And I just, I really think they're the best. Uh, they're probably twice as much as what you would pay at a cost, for a Costco chicken, but I think for me personally, that would be my choice. So really all you have to do with our rotisserie chicken is just let it cool a little bit so you can touch it, remove the skin, just debone it, and chop your chicken up into small pieces so it'll fit nicely into your enchiladas. Now if you like your chicken shredded, here's an idea for you. Take your mixer, I put the rest of the chicken in the bowl, and let the mixer do the shredding for you. It's nice and easy. This is what the peppers and the tomatillos look like after about 20, 22 minutes in the oven. So things were going slow, so I decided to raise the rack up a notch and we're gonna keep a close eye on the garlic, especially we don't want it to burn. Oh my goodness, I forgot my poblana pepper to put it on the tray, but I'm gonna show you how quickly 
and easily I can just go ahead and uh, brown that one up and you know char it and get it nice and flavorful right on the stove and it'll only take me just a few minutes. You can't do the tomatillos like I'm going to show you on this pepper here. The tomatillos just lose a lot of their liquid and it makes a mess. So all I have to do here is take my poblano pepper and just lay it directly over a flame. Now you keep rotating that pepper until the whole thing is charred and then we'll place it into a dish. And then take a piece of plastic wrap and cover the bowl. So after 20 minutes of cooking, I raised the rack up one and now it's time to take out that garlic because the garlic gets done faster than anything else. Once it's soft by squeezing it, you'll know it's done. So here's what the tomatillos and the peppers and the onions look like after they're done. They're nice and charred up and you can see the tomatillos have really gotten almost mushy, which is what you really want anyway. So no worries there. Uh, it, has a lot of liquid in there but we're going to keep all that and put it in our food processor. I'm going to take the peppers off here and place them in the bowl with that uh, poblano pepper to steam a little bit. So roasting these tomatillos and peppers is how you get the best flavor. It's my secret. No roasting means less flavor. Okay so it must be time for chef joke number two. Are you ready? All right here we go. Why couldn't the pepper do archery? because he didn't habanero. <laughs> Our peppers have been cooling off here for about 10 minutes. They're steaming, they're getting a little bit softer. And what we wanna do here is take off the skin. This is my Anaheim pepper and you can see the skin is just, you know, it's, it's coarse, it's, you know, kind of stiff. You don't, you don't want that in your sauce. So we'll just peel it off. It peels off real easy as you can see here. And I like to take the seeds out of my pepper. Feel free to leave it in if you like a lot of heat. The Anaheim pepper isn't very hot, so that's really not an issue, but I, I just don't like the seeds, so I take them out. So you just want to open it up and basically just scrape it out. Here's my jalapeno. Be careful with that because, you know, if you touch your face, uh, you might not be too happy. So go ahead and do the same procedure with the jalapeno. Now when you get to the poblamo uh, that we charred on the stove, we're going to take a little different approach. The charring is very black and you're going to use a couple paper towels to scrape it off. So don't rinse off any of the peppers to get some of the you know charring off because that'll just wash away a lot of great flavor. All you got to do is rub it off and if there's some left on there, no big deal. It just adds more flavor. Cut out the seeds again, just like you did in the other peppers, and scrape out the seeds that are on the pepper. Okay, so our peppers can go into a food processor. So we'll lay those in. Now here's our pan that is just, you know, with the tomatillos and the onions, and there's a lot of juice in here, and you wanna get all that juice into the food processor. Don't leave any of that out. So I'm just gonna take a spatula, and hopefully carefully get all this in here without making a big mess. Now we're gonna add that roasted garlic, so peel off the paper and put that in the food processor. Next, we'll add some ground cumin, dried oregano, some salt, the juice from a half of a lime, and some chicken broth to thin the sauce down, say about a third of a cup to a half a cup. And then we're gonna process the sauce until it's smooth. You may have to scrape down the sides to get those pieces that are trying to get away. This is the consistency you're looking for. So before we assemble our casserole, let's get the rest of the ingredients together. We'll need some Clover Organic Heavy Whipping Cream. I really like this brand because the ingredients are so clean. We'll also need some cheese. Now I've grated up some cheddar cheese here along with some Monterey Jack. I like to grate my own so that I don't have any mold inhibitors or anti-caking ingredients in my cheese. I got my little setup here. This is a pan where I'm going to place my tortillas after we dip them in oil. So we're gonna cook our tortillas in some avocado oil before we assemble our enchiladas. This is really important. I, I've seen people do not do this and you don't get as good a flavor, you don't get as good of an enchilada by far. And avocado oil is a good oil to use and you wanna just put you know enough to cover, this is a very small uh, frying pan, probably eight inches. 
You gotta, you gotta let your oil get hot. It's gotta be at least 350 before you start dipping your tortillas into it. Okay, so here's a question for you. How do you know when your oil's hot enough to put the tortillas in? Now there's a couple of different ways to tell. The smell, I can start to smell the oil more. Right now, it gets very liquidy, it gets, it gets very thin. You can take an instant read thermometer and you can place it just in the oil, try not to touch the bottom of the pan and get a sense of where it's at. 360, I think it's hot enough. Another way to tell is you can do a test. Take a tortilla and place it in the oil. If it bubbles up right away like that did, then you know it's just right. Okay, so we're just gonna turn these over. I'm doing one at a time. A lot of times the tortilla will tear, which is you know a little bit of a nuisance, but it's not a big deal. You can still use the tortilla. Now you wanna make sure it's still pliable so you can roll it up. And I'm gonna place it right there on my uh, sheet. You can do two at a time if you want if you're really daring, <laughs> but you want to turn them over a few times and they're only going to stay in here a few seconds because this oil is pretty nice and hot, which is what you want. If you start with the oil not more hot enough, then it's just going to absorb into the tortilla and just make it real soggy. Let it drain off and lay them on the, on the tray. So I'm going to continue doing this until I have about 11 or 12 tortillas ready. Okay, once these tortillas are cool enough to handle, which some of them are, you're gonna take some chicken, and I'm, I have my hands are clean, so uh, it's just much, much better control than trying to use a spoon or something like that. So you're gonna put about that much chicken on there, and then we're gonna take some of our cheese, and we're gonna put a little bit of cheese on there, so that's gonna be nice and cheesy on the inside. And then we're gonna take this piece, this part of it, and roll it over and tuck it in. And then pick up that other seam, hold the side so the food doesn't fall out, and place it on your plate or on your dish. Repeat the process until you have a casserole full of enchiladas. I've got 11 enchiladas in here, as you can see, and now it's time for that sauce. So we're gonna put our tomatillo sauce right on top, and you can thin this out if you want to, but I like it a little bit on the thick side. I used all the sauce on this casserole because you gotta have enough sauce. Now we're gonna take that uh, heavy cream and we're going to just drizzle some over the top of the casserole. Not too much, about a half a cup. And, uh, cause we don't wanna dilute the flavor of the sauce. And then we'll finish it off with our grated cheese. And then we're gonna place the casserole into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until that cheese is nice and bubbly and you see a lot of bubbles all around so you know everything's hot. Our casserole is done. You saw how it was nice and bubbly in the oven. That's what you want. You wanna make sure everything inside gets nice and hot so you gotta see a lot of bubble. All right, let's serve this up. Now it might be kind of challenging to see which, where the, which way the enchiladas run, but I know because I put them in here and I can kind of see it here. So these are lined up. All right, I'm gonna give that a taste. It smells incredible in here. These are delicious. That sauce, that uh, tomatillo sauce is, it's got a little bit of a, almost like a tang to it, that, that lime that we put in there really brightens it up. And you know what would go great with this dish is my refried beans recipe. They are dynamite. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a link for you, check those out, make them with this, and you're gonna have a delicious Mexican dinner. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and push the old like button for me to let me know. And if you have any recipe requests, let me know about that as well. I always like to hear from you guys. So we'll see you back here next week for another Rockin' Recipe.